Hello, everybody, and welcome to the aquarium at the Lakeland University, or tonight, Lakeland Muskies host Concordia of Wisconsin in a Northern Athletics co uh, Collegiate Conference game. I'm Chris Wright, going solo tonight. Mike Martin is in Arizona once again, but we wanted to bring you this great game because tonight we have four kids, four kids from uh, Sheboygan playing in it. Two for uh, Lakeland University and two brothers from Concordia that are, are going to be in the uh, on the, uh, I guess you could say, the enemy side tonight. Uh, first of all, for uh, Lakeland, we have Zach Hosenstein and Sam Kaminsky, two players that played at North High School. And then over at Concordia, we have uh, both Jacob and Jared Jers, both Sheboygan Lutheran grads. Uh, by, on a side note to the Jers boys, their brother uh, is playing Jonah over at Lutheran tonight. So they had to actually split up their family tonight. But uh, many of the Jerses are still here in attendance. Uh, let's talk about uh, our records today. And we'll start with Lakeland. When we saw Lakeland about uh, uh, three weeks ago, they were 6-2 and two. since that time. They've lost uh, every game since. And right now, they're sitting at 6-9, and 4-6 and six in league play. On the flip side, when we look at Concordia, yeah, they are uh, in second place in the league. They're 9-2. and two. MSOE and Brian Miller, former uh, Lakeland coach, is leading that squad. But Concordia has a very nice team. 9-5 uh, and five overall and 9-2 and two in league play. And if the Muskies want to get back in it, this is the type of game that they're going to have to win on their home court. Uh, I talked a little bit to some of the Lakeland people before the game, and they're saying Lakeland's starting to play a little bit better, but uh, they, they just need to have a game where they can uh, get things going. One thing they've been doing too much of probably is shooting a three, so they're going to try to do a little bit more work uh, inside a little bit tonight uh, instead of just relying on the three. What you're going to see from Concordia is a team that's going to be running up and down the floor, and uh, they're going to try to create uh, easy opportunities and fast break situations like that. And uh, as I said in the opening when I first started, is I'm very excited about tonight's game, and uh, in about 30 seconds we'll get that way. But uh, as we're taking a break here, let's take a minute and we'll listen to the national anthem. Thank 
Well, there are your starters for Concordia and Lakeland. Uh, we'll watch uh, Zach Hosenstein, number 23 from Sheboygan North, averaging 11-7. And uh, Jake Jers, the senior, is averaging 10-4. Jared has been starting. Uh, he's averaging 3.5 uh, points per game, but he gets a lot more assists. He uh, leads the team in assists 45 for Concordia. It's nice to see Pat McDonald back for Lakeland. Uh, their leading scorer, he's been out with injuries, been playing the last couple games. He leads Lakeland in scoring at 16-3. As I said, he's from Port Washington. He wears number 11. And we're ready to tip off here. Concordia will be in blue. And your Muskies will be in yellow. And there is Jared Jers handing off to his brother, Jake Jers. Excuse me, Jake to Jared. That's Jared number two. Right away, they're going to go inside in a nice block by Lakeland. And there's Hosenstein on the dribble drive. And right away, Lakeland up with a three, and it's missed. Rebound by Fransky, Andrew Fransky from Minnesota. He got banged before, number 22 from Concordia. The big player for Concordia is number 42. That's Josh Howe. He's a three-point, excuse me, a thousand-point scorer for uh, Concordia in his career. I believe just the 17th or 18th young man to do that at Concordia. And there's a three by Hosentine. It looks short. Rebound by Fransky. And there comes the Falcons, pushed by Jake Jers. Knocked out of bounds. We're just underway, 1856, first half. Chris Wright going solo tonight. Mike Martin in Arizona again. Very excited just because of the fact of all the local ties in this game. And actually, two teams that were supposed to go for the conference, Lakeland's not holding up their end. Maybe they can get things on track tonight. Jake Jers. And there's a shot away, and again, and a miss. And we played in a minute and a half, and knew, but he has scored. Carlos Campos, second in the team in scoring for Lakeland, number 10. Hands it off to Duffin. Over to Hosenstein, who gets our first basket of the game. The kick out to Jers for three. No good. Nygaard from Plymouth, number 34 on the re rebound. That's Campos. Nygaard on the dribble drive. Loses it out of bounds. But they're going to say it was tipped. And I'm not helping the officials out with the ball that just rolled past me. Hazi's going to inbound it here, leading two zip. 17.52 left in the first half. That's Nygaard, Eric Nygaard from Plymouth. And they're going to say he traveled with the basketball.
Johnson over to, to Jers. Can't call him JJ because all the boys have a name with a J on it. And there was a miss by Jared. And here comes Lakeland trying to push it. There's a leaner miss. Rebound by Fransky again. And this time Concordia loses it out of bounds. I saw Concordia play Marion a couple weeks ago as well. Uh, they got a nice team, very nice team. This is Pat McDonald, the senior, playing in just his fifth game. Dribble driving, basket's good for Carlos Campos and a 4 nothing lead for Lakeland. Jared over to his brother, Jake. And another Concordia turnover. Well, they're going to get Jers on the foul, and we're going to get a couple free throws. Going to the line will be Garrick Duffin. Duffin at 59% from the free throw line this season. Duffin from Princeton, Wisconsin. He's a senior out here. And the second free throw is good for Duffin. That makes it five to nothing. In favor of Lakeland. 16.30 left. Johnson on a drive and they're gonna get a foul. I'm gonna say that Johnson wrapped him, but uh, that's not going to go to any avail to the officials. I'm gonna get Hosenstein on the foul. Eighty-five percent free throw shooter gets the first one to fall and the first points for Concordia. Two for two trip. It's now five to two. Donald. Again, not a lot of movement by the Muskies. Now we get a pop out. And a three point shot goes in and out for Campos. He can't believe the basket didn't want it. From way downtown is how he can hit that, and he does. It's a three pointer for how. Evens the score at five apiece. Hazi from way downtown tries to answer. Goes out of bounds back to Concordia. Concordia is coached by Sean Casey in his 12th year. Sam Schrader in his second year at Concordia. This is the 127th meeting between these two teams. That's crazy. Dating back to 1938-39 season. On a gamble by the Muskies. Pays off for a flush. Watch this on replay. Gamble by Nygaard, flush for Francis. And a foul on Johnson for Concordia. That's their second team foul. Into the lineup is Isaiah Tunnett. He's number one. He's a little spark plug. He resides from Sacramento, California. Also in is Noah Gussie for Concordia. And a good player also is Olekian George, number four for Concordia. In for Lakeland, Joaquin Pagis. And he comes in and scores right away. We're back to even. And there's another turnover by Concordia. Muskie's on the push. There's McDonald. There's two seniors going at it, Howell and McDonald. Pagese again. No good. 
And Tanet, which I saw play a couple weeks ago, he's got some springs, considering the fact he's just 5'8". Shakur Jahan comes in, number five for Lakeland. 14 points off the bench, been getting a lot of minutes with uh, McDonald and Campos out earlier in the season. Zach Hosenstein also missed uh, a couple of games already. Lakeland's only had uh, one game guy play all 15 games this year, so it's good to see them getting healthy again. There's McDonald, and he gets fouled on the shot, and that's going to be a foul on Fratzi. Another poor decision is fouling a three-point shooter, and he's going to get three right here. McDonald trying to be the fifth different musky to put points on the board. He's now just eight of 13 on free throws this year. Like I said, just played four games. And that's not a good trip so far for McDonald's. Gotta take advantage of these situations when uh, Get fouled for a three-point shot. And he gets one of the three to fall and gives the Muskies an eight to seven lead. And that with his speed. This kid can jump and scores. George drives to the basket and scores. And he's fouled. George, just a 55% free throw shooter. That makes that look pretty. Three point play the old fashioned way. It's now 10 to eight in favor of the Falcons. 14 minute mark. There's a dribble drive by Don. Jokum almost turns it over. Number 20. Dante Carlton checked in too, he's number one. We've seen him before, he's a junior from Green Bay East, an outstanding athlete at Green Bay East. I believe he was their quarterback and played basketball. There's a three point shot up and good for Shakur Janad. He gets the first three point basket and so far six different Muskies have scored. I have them for 13. Oh no, it's 11, excuse me, 11 to eight. A miss by Concordia. Another three-pointer up and good. This time by Pegues makes one. Call steps on Joey Zietlow. Number 12 for Concordia. Comes from Oak Creek. And Lakeland trying to expand on their lead of four. They were up five to zero. It's now 14 to 10. 12.50. Here's a nice dribble drive and dump. Nice easy shot, but it was missed. Jihad with the drive, but it would not fall for them. Tanette.
Look at George just using that body to get to the basket. He misses the easy one, but here's a rebound put back by Brandon Keller. Another young man from Plymouth. He gets fouled. He's a 6'7 freshman. Eric Nygaard, number 34, starting center for Plymouth. Or excuse me, Lakeland is also from Plymouth. Jairus Brothers back in the lineup for Concordia. Jared, the freshman, number two, and Jake, the senior, number three. And an 0 for 2 trip. Concordia not off to a really good start with turnovers and some missed free throws. Let's see if Lakeland can take advantage. Almost there's a turnover there. Car Carlton. Switched his pivot feet, and he walked. There's a nice inside feed, and another missed opportunity, that time by Noah Gussie for Concordia. Why not, Pegues? Oh, he hit it last couple, but there's a big rebound by Gussie for Concordia. Jared over to Gussie. That shot's missed. Rebound by Carlton. And here comes the fish. Swung out to Pegues. That's Carlton. He can make that from out there. I think they're going to get a foul. Brandon Keller. Three starters of four starters for uh, Lakeland back in. Hazi. Campos and a turnover by Hazenstein. Jake Jers on the push. Nice feed over to Johnson. And the basket and a quick timeout by Lakeland. It's going to be a 30 second timeout for Lakeland. As I mentioned in the uh, beginning of this program, MSO Lee leads the conference at 9-1. Concordia of Mequon, or Wisconsin, is 9-2. Then there's a whole host of teams right in the bunch there, including Lakeland, Illinois Tech is 6-4, Rockford 6-4, Benedictine and Aurora, and Edgewater in 5-5, five and, five, and then your Muskies are 4-6. Uh, Lakeland got off to a really good start at 6-2 this year, but since that time, uh, they've lost seven in a row, including a heartbreaking overtime game uh, last week on the ninth, and they lost to MSOE uh, at MSOE by 10. Next game for uh, Lakeland is at Aurora, defending Northern Athletic Conference, or Collegiate Conference champions. Nice deep in there and good. Campos pushing the offense, getting to the basket, he gets rewarded with a basket, and he has a chance to make it a three-point play. Makes it a three-point play and a 17 to 12 lead. Ties the biggest lead of the game. They're calling an offensive foul.
Lalekin George on the offensive foul. Sixth team foul on Concordia. Lakeland will be in the bonus the rest of the half. Campos pushes it down there to Duffin. His shot is up and good. 19 to 12. Duffin now with three points. Jers kicks it out for a three-pointer and good. Jordan Johnson answers with a three-pointer. There's a miss by the fish. Here comes Jake Jers. Now they're starting to pass really well. And that 19 to 12 lead is down to 19 to 17. And there's another turnover by the Fish Campion. And here's George on a reverse, he misses it. Nygaard gets it knocked out of his hand. Hosenstein saves it to Campos. This is McDonald, nice fake, driving. Thought he was followed by Jers, no call. Jordan Johnson for Concordia pushing it. Jers back to Johnson. Way out to Jared. Goes right by Hazi. Kicks it to his brother. Johnson again. This is way short. Campos. Back to Duffin. And we're going to get another traveling violation. A lot of turnovers. And they're really going here. 8.54. Left in the first half, Lakeland 19. Concordia 17. The first meeting of these two teams this year. February 2nd, the Muskies will be down in Mequon to play the Falcons. There's another shot by Howe and that's good. Just like that, it's a 2019 lead for Concordia. Duffin for three, answers right back. 22-20. Jers, nice pass. Fortunately, Fratsky wasn't ready for it. It's a turnover. That was a nice pass by Jared. Nygaard with the fake, pull up. Basket doesn't want it down here. Rebound by Jordan Johnson of the Falcons. Howe with a nice pass and a miss by Fratsky. Johnson, double teamed, skip pass to Jers. No, Hosenstein comes away with it. Back and forth they go. Not a lot of baskets. And uh, Sean Cassidy in Concordia calls out one of their plays. And try to roll, there it is, Howe off the screen, and he missed it. Everything worked well for Concordia there except for putting it in the layup. Campus with a three. Again, another three-pointer by Lakeland not falling. And a one and out. Not too many second opportunities for Lakeland tonight. Jordan Johnson. There's how he can hit that. Not this time. And we have wholesale substitutions. Noah Gussie back in for Concordia, along with Isaiah Tanet. Joaquin Pegues back in for Pegisi in for Lakeland. Nygaard nice and low, but he can't finish. Yeah. 
Lakeland will end unbound it here. This is Trent Nickel from Keel, number 24 in the game. Looking, looking. And that's a turnover, and that's not going to uh, give you time on the bench. Or, nope, they didn't take him out. They took Duffin out. Thought Nickel, because he couldn't get it in, was going to uh, find himself a seat. 6.24 left. A quick first half. Looked like a walk there. Instead, Kratzky turns it over. This is Janad. He's got the ha hot hand tonight for Lakeland. 24, 20. I have Jahad with five points. There's a long bomb by Jordan Johnson. He's got 10 and a half. Pulls Concordia within one. And back and forth basically the whole game. Biggest lead for Lakeland is five. Biggest lead for Concordia is two. Noah Gussie commits the foul for Concordia. That puts them over the limit. Puts Pat McDonald back to the free throw line. He had an unsuccessful one for three trip the first time, but he hits this one. He makes it a perfect trip. Donald now with five points in the first half. And that trying to get deep, uses that vertical, but could not get it to go. Rebound by Nygaard. Gisi using his speed, gets it up and over and good. I have him for seven. I think he stepped on the line and another Concordia turnover. And uh, Sean C Cassidy not happy with all the empty trips for the Falcons. Pagisi. Comes in averaging seven points again. He's number four. He's already got at his average. Swings this one over to Nickel. And an empty trip for the fish. And they're going to get a hand check on top. Pat McDonald picks up his first foul. Duffin going to come back in the game. Garrett Duffin. Just 14 fouls on Lakeland. Seven on Concordia. 4.30 left in the first half. Nice push by Howe. And that's why he scored over 1,000 points so far this year. McDonald quickly picks up his second foul, and that'll get Zach Hosenstein off the bench. Misses the free throw. Remains a three-point lead for Lakeland. Shakur Jihad, not this time. Rebound by Keller. Gotta like the effort by the fish tonight. Really on the defensive end, doing a nice job. Wow, 
A lot of contact, no foul. Duffin looking, but nobody's in the post. They don't really have any big tall guys out there. Pat McDonald gets called for an offensive foul, and that's his third. And the coach is going, a Coach Schrader is really upset with that call, and he's going to get a technical foul. He did not like the fact that they called McDonald on that foul. Wanted to get McDonald out of the game. He's a little calmer now. There you see. See if that puts a spark into the Muskies. Two for two trip. For Jordan Johnson. 85% free throw shooter made both of those. He's now got a dozen of the 27 points for Concordia. And now it becomes a five-point play. And a lead for Concordia after the technical. Bad things happen there. McDonald picks up his third technical on Lakeland's Coach Schrader. And then two free throws and a three-pointer. And Gussie's fighting. He's trapped. They're going to get a jump. Gussie wanted a foul. Noah Gussie, a senior from Green Bay, New Lutheran. I'm sure he played against Jacob Jers. There's a nice inbounds play and a score for Lakeland. All even, under three minutes at the aquarium. Chris Wright going solo tonight. We got the A team tonight. Richard up on the upper camera and Eric and Scott in the truck and there's a three by Howe. He's good. And we have a student helper, Camelia Trimberger, a junior at South down here. Doing the camera right there. She was a little nervous tonight but Doing a nice job. And how one of his best looks. And they're going to get a foul on Noah Gussie. As Joaquin Pugisi did a nice job there to draw that foul. Made the basket. We'll be shooting one for... Whoa, they gave Howell only a two before. I thought Howe had a three. So it's 32 to 30. So we're still tied after the miss. Under two minutes, Jordan Johnson, the Bulldog. Cedarburg, how driving right in on Hosenstein, and the senior draws the foul on Hazi. Hazi with two fouls, so that'll bring Trent Nickel in the game. How was at the line just a few minutes ago where he missed two? He's averaging 15 6 a game. One for two trip. 
but gives the Falcons a lead. 33-32, Concordia. That's Nickel from Keel. Campos, bingo from three. An excellent first half. Neither team can really pull away from the other. Nice drive and another miss by Concordia. And with a minute 17 and the lead, oh, Lakeland turns it over. Very athletic. George scores an easy one. Carlos Campos. Geese has a nice first half. Him and Campos have led them. He's gonna not get that one to grow. So with 40 seconds, here comes the Falcons with a chance to take the lead. Connette, Howe, driving. Bounce pass, out of bounds. And probably the last possession. Oh, well, there's gonna be some questions. They're gonna say no. It's gonna go to the fish. So the last possession of the first half should go to Lakeland. 30 seconds on the shot clock, 30.0 up above. Shot clock should probably be turned off. Official's gonna let it go. Lakeland holding it for one. The trader calling out a play. Here's Campos, drives, throwing away. Here comes George, two, can he beat it? And it counts. George hits the basket at the end of the first half give Cordia a 37-35 first half lead in what's been an outstanding first half of basketball. When we return, we'll have second half action. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I groomed the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. Party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving. The ultimate party foul. Okay, so we drowned the fire. Yep. Stirred it. Mm -hmm. Drowned it again. Mm -hmm. And now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool.
Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods come. I'm a teacher. I make more. When you have arthritis, it can be a painful reminder of all the things you can't do. Let's get a grip on arthritis. You can help by donating at arthritis.org. Some chores you dread. You do them. But that doesn't mean you're happy about it. And there's registering with the Selective Service. If you're a young man turning 18, the law says you have to register. It'll keep you eligible for college loans, government jobs, and training, and it only takes two minutes, which makes it not only your most important chore, but the easiest. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov or the local post office. Mom and Dad used to argue about everything, especially about Dad's drinking. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful when Mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. I wanted a better relationship with Dad, so I asked Mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to al -Ateen. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or al family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al -Anon. them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire, and that could be scary. Bye, Only you can prevent wildfires. Okay, hi, my name's Tim Bull. I'm a ISA certified arborist uh, with the city of Sheboygan. I've been working here about a year. Uh, one of the primary focuses of my job is to treat the ash trees. The emerald ash borer is an insect that's been in Wisconsin for over 10 years, and it's working its way kind of north from southern Wisconsin. It's been found in Sheboygan for for a few years now it's been around and the focus is for the city to try to save the ash trees before they all die let's there's about 5,000 ash trees on the on the street between the street and the sidewalk and just to give you a sense there's about 20 to 23,000 trees between the street and the sidewalk so five those 5,000 of those are ash trees so it's important to the, for the city to not let all those trees die at the same time. So the emerald ash borer is an insect where it gets in the tree, it lays eggs, the eggs hatch and burrow under the bark, and they basically suffocate the tree as they feed. Now it takes a number of years before you, you, you'll see an effect from the insect. But the important thing is when you're trying to save an ash tree is to is to treat it with an insecticide before you see an, before you see the tree declining because by the time the tree you see the effect that the tree is dying it's it could be too late sometimes it's not too late but but many times the damage is already that's done is already done and can't be repaired so it's more of a preventative measure 
that we're doing. And uh, I've been treating ash trees for about six years now. I've seen I've seen it work. I've seen the I've seen where I've treated a tree. I came back two years later, treated the same tree again, and the tree was still healthy. But maybe the neighbor the neighbor's trees that were untreated were almost dead. So I believe in it, and research backs it up. It's supposed to be over 96% effective. As far as the city's plan, their plan is to treat half the ash trees and remove half the ash trees because it's expensive either way you want to look at it. If you want to remove them all, it's a huge expense. If you want to treat them all, it's very expensive. So a kind of compromise is to try to save half, remove half over a three-year period. So this year, 2017, we've I've treated between 1,100 and 1,200 ash trees to date, and over the next year and over the next two years, we'll get to that 2,500 mark where we've potentially saved half the trees. Now, the city's doing a three-year treatment process where every three years we'll have to retreat if we want the tree to continue to survive, and uh, right now the insecticide that we're using. The active ingredient is MMX and benzoate. There's a number of different products that contain that. It's labeled for two years, where you, every two years you should retreat, but a lot of research is saying you can get at least three years out of it, so that's why the city's gone with the three-year plan. Well, first of all, the process of picking which trees to save and which trees not to save really stems from, is the tree in a good location to begin with? So if we're only gonna save half the ash trees, we want to save the ones that are in a good spot versus the ones that are not an ideal spot. So we look for uh, median grass areas between the road and the sidewalk that are at least six feet wide. This one here that we're in is, is probably more like eight feet. And we want to look for spots where there's no overhead power lines that the tree's growing into or if the tree is really buckling up the sidewalk or something like that, maybe that's not an ideal tree to save. So once we determine which trees we want to save, the process is pretty simple. We, we drill into the tree with a small, about a, a little smaller than a pencil size hole, and a tree will take anywhere from four holes to, I had one this year that I had 10 holes in. So average, I would say six or seven drills, about an inch under the bark. And then those holes get filled up, you put a, an injection key in each one of those holes so it's all sealed and each one of those keys is connected with a small hose which all stems back to a bottle which which has the insecticide in it now the tree the amount of the amount of insecticide that's used depends on the tree size so the rate the city uses is a uh, five milliliters per diameter inch of the tree now diameter is measured at breast height four and a half feet above ground Okay, yeah, so this tree here is 18 inches in diameter. So 18 times five is 90 milliliters that this tree requires. So as we're going down a street, I have a guy helping me. He measures them, he records what's gonna be used. He records the address where the tree is. And I get to the tree and I get to work drilling, setting it up, measuring the chemical that's going in. And once I get it all set, it's just a matter of pressurizing the container, the bottle with the insecticide to get that insecticide to the tree. And really, it's just a, a bike pump that I'm using to pressurize, and I give it about 30 pounds of pressure, and that'll get the insecticide to the tree, and it's up to the tree to take it in. So every tree is different. Some trees take it right in. Some trees are a little slower. Sometimes you don't get that uptake. It, it, the tree just refuses to, to suck anything up, so then you that's a sure sign that the tree is too far gone and, and there's no point in trying to save that tree. So once I have it all set up and pressurized, it's up to the tree to take it in. And really I could increase the pressure to 40 pounds, even 50 pounds, but it, it isn't gonna make a difference how fast the tree takes it in. It, really the pressure is just getting the chemical to the tree. And once once the, the lines, the, the hoses are all clear, so you can see the blue, the chemical is blue, you can see it going in, and once those lines are all emptied out, then you can un undo the pressure and unhook the tree, and 
that's all that needs to be done. Now everything, when we leave a tree that we've treated, we, we got a can of blue spray paint. We put a, a dot on the street side of the tree, uh, roughly two, three feet off the ground. And that is a symbol that we've treated that ash tree, that we plan on saving that ash tree. And we'll also put a, a pesticide sign down that says, keep off pesticide. That's something that needs to be done. It's required by the, the pesticide regulations for the state. So those signs will leave for a day and we'll pick them up the next day. But the blue dot will stay, so we'll always know that that tree was treated in 2017. As far as danger to people walking by or anything like that with the, with the pesticide that we're using, the, the, caution, the word is caution on the, on the label of this insecticide, which is the lowest toxicity. Really, it's not much to worry about. Since it's all going right into the tree itself, there's, there's nothing going to be on the grass or in the air or anything really to worry about as far as that goes. As soon as, as, soon as I leave the tree and, and the blue dot will stay there but nothing else will be there, that tree is, is safe to be around. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. We're back at uh, Wilson Gymnasium, better known as what I like to call the aquarium, where Concordia, with a shot at the uh, buzzer, took a 37-35 point lead over Concordia. Let's go over s some of the scoring here so far. Uh, leading the way for Concordia was Jordan Johnson and Josh Howe. Uh, Johnson with 12 and Howe with 11. Uh, O'Kellen George had nine for Concordia. Four-year Lakeland Muskies, a lot of balance scoring in that uh, first half, uh, led by Wakan, excuse me, Wakan Pagisi. Pagis, he had nine points. Carlos Campos had eight. Uh, Shakur Jahad had seven, and Garrett Duffin had six. So very balanced scoring uh, in that first half for Lakeland and. Fortunately, I found someone that can join me for the second half for some of it, if not all of it. Dave Gennetti came out here. Dave, thanks for joining us. You bet. And, and once again, tell the folks at home just what you do out here. Well. Besides nothing. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good question. I'm a director of external relations, so marketing and branding and PR and telling everybody the good news about what's going on at Lakeland University, that's my job, so. Well, I know you've always been a big basketball fan long before you were here. I mean, you worked for the Sheboygan Press, but I mean, you were, uh, you followed basketball, I know, through high school games, and uh, you would come out here long before you even had a job out here, uh, but that's a big passion of yours, I know. It is, yeah, it's just a sport that I've always really enjoyed, and, um, you know, being able to be part of it out here to get to know the players on the men's side and the women's side and you know, watch them grow and develop as people in addition to players is, is a nice treat. Well, this is uh, Jared Jers going right to the basket. The Lutheran kid scores. <laughs> Biggest lead, I think, for uh, Concordia there, and we don't need those turnovers to start the, the second half. And there was a miss by Johnson. And again, turnovers, a lot of turnovers. 13 turnovers for Concordia, 10 for Lakeland that first half. And there is a miss by Campos. Ball's flying around a lot in that first half. It was that tempo in the first half was pretty intense for a while. Well, I know I talked to some of the staff from Lakeland, they're trying to slow it down a little bit, trying to work it inside, but 
get away from the three-point basket because it hasn't really worked for them. They're over there losing streaks, so they try to change things up, but unfortunately, it looks like it's more of a track meet again. And it's hard when you go with the style for a little more than half the season and then try to change things up. It's challenging. Yep. And there's another miss by Campos. In that first half, Lakeland was just 4 of 18. Now they're 4 of 20 from three-point range. And they just got to get that going. I know they're shooting about 33% from the three-point strike this year, which is an awful. And, and Jers gets bumped, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds. I think the encouraging number for Lakeland at the half was the rebounding. Um, actually, Lakeland was plus, plus one. Rebounding has been a, a tough nut to crack for this team. and. Concordia's got a size advantage in a number of positions and have the rebound edge at half was a big number for Lakeland. Well, when I've seen Lakeland, I noticed that, I mean, besides really Nygaard, and Nygaard's really not a big kid either, but they're not, they really don't have any true strong post players. Right. And another miss by Campos, and there's Howe with the rebound. That's the freshman, Jared Jers, looking for his brother in the parking lot. And sometimes even brothers miss each other. You know, coming in, I, I was really excited about doing this game because it was Concordia with the two Jers kids for Concordia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I know Lakeland was, you know, supposed to kind of battle for the conference crown as well. And, you know, they got to get themselves on track or else the, uh, the lead pack's going to get away. Yeah, I, you know, and the, the tough thing to be coming out of a losing streak now is the, the tough part of the schedule is here, and um, there's Nygaard fighting. That's, yeah, that's that's what that's what Nygaard is great at is getting in the bucket. He's kind of that junkyard dog kind of player, and and finds a way. But Lakeland's got five straight road Saturdays uh, in the second half here, and when you need to win a game to break out of the funk. It's not a friendly schedule. Yeah, I saw they got three in a row right away, and then yeah. off, and you know they're going to be seeing Concordia again right away. And yeah, I know they got playing at Aurora is always tough. Duffin misses one. Things that were going well in the first half aren't going well so far. Here and there's a turnover again by Jers Concordia with a lot of turnovers. Yeah, and it uh, just looks like people are trying to force an extra pass sometimes where there's not one. And There's a nice little open open look inside for McDonald. You know, that's another thing for Lakeland. You gotta get Pat McDonald going. And uh, senior senior leader, he can carry you for stretches and he can make some of the most acrobatic shots. And well, and I know it's him being out this year too. I was looking at the roster. I mean, they haven't had a healthy team either no. where everybody's been on the floor. And you know, at one point, I think it was a two-game stretch there where we had, you know, and you never want to make excuses, but but McDonald, Campos, and Hassenstein, yep. all three were out, and that takes the edge off of your scoring. Now, luckily, we had some kids really step up during that time and played well, you know, and then the problem is when those three guys come back, uh, you got to try to find minutes for everybody. So for Coach Schrader, it's been an interesting challenge. Ligard picked up the foul on the wrap there. Jers trying to get there, but Hasenstein playing that good, strong defense. Good dump out to the big fella. They're going to make France Key, Andrew France Key, earn it at the stripe. Now, he's from Minnesota, and I, I talked to you about this just a minute ago. One thing I, I uh, was one of my big questions was, where do you get kids from, like, Louisiana? <laughs> and the football team's got a bunch of kids from uh, Florida and Michigan. How do all those kids find... Howard's Grove in Lakeland, Wisconsin. Yeah, well, we go find them. You know, I mean, obviously with the internet, it's a small world. And, um, you know, recruiting is, uh, I don't know if I would say easier, but it's different now because of technology and the web. And then when you get a kid like Michael Whitley, you know, who was an All-American quarterback and set a number of school records and was from Louisiana. And then he goes back home and tells all his buddies, hey, I got a great education at Lakeland. Now he's signing, a, you know, he's gonna be playing uh, for the Sioux Falls team in arena football. 
And in the meantime, he's back home. Our assistants are right now down in Louisiana, and Michael's taking them around town and around the region and introducing them to people. So, Well, I know Johnson with the miss there. McDonald's fighting like he can. It's going to go over to the fish. I know uh, I also drive that go right way van sometimes on weekends and stuff. All of a sudden, I picked up a kid. Here he's from Louisiana. He's here to play baseball. <laughs> so we're having a conversation. I'm like, it's not just football or no, basketball. No. You got it's other sports. You mentioned your volleyball. Yeah, team men's volleyball's well. got three kids from Hawaii. Can you imagine? Uh, it's supposed to be what uh, I think a low of five this weekend, <laughs> and these kids from Hawaii are <laughs> sitting up here shivering. But you know, you you spread the word, and um, but if you look at you know the rosters of a lot of the schools in our conference. You'll see a fair number of out-of-state, out-of-region, out-of-state. And again, I think it's the web. It, it, it makes the world a very small place. And uh, with websites today, you can get a feel for a school before you ever set foot on campus. And uh, a lot of kids just want to play. They want to play ball. They want an opportunity to play ball. Well, a slow start for the Muskies here in the second half. We're at the 15.08 mark. Lakeland trailing Concordia by four. That's their big player, Howe, scoring for them. It's now a seven-point lead, biggest lead for the Falcons in the game. And uh, the Muskies got to find something. Yeah, you just you want to stay close. You know, you don't. You're not going to dial up a seven-point shot. So work your offense, chip away, get some stops, and you're right back in it. But. Hey, that Nickel helps out the cause a little bit. He's a great, just a great spark plug off the bench. Trent works hard on both both ends of the floor. And, you yeah. know, now here you get a stop and you're down three and you're right back in the ball game. But there's how they're. Or not. <laughs> yeah, they're big fella. Yeah. Cordia's uh, been putting together a nice season. They're, these games are always great between Lakeland and Concordia. And, Again, all the baskets that were going in the first half aren't. And Howe's open again. Took too much time, I think, that time. Yeah. Nickel with the rebound. We mentioned uh, Trent Nickel, local kid, just up the street in Keel. Yep. Dad, uh, his dad, Corey. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hall of Famer here at Lakeland. Oh, yeah. Doesn't miss a game now. And Trent wears the old number 24, which is what his old man wore. I can't wore, believe so. it seemed like he was just here. I hate to tell you uh, that. I, <laughs> trust me. Those were my first couple of years here. I. Yeah. I. Uh, well, when Paul Combs from when we played Carroll. Oh, yeah. Uh, Paul coached Corey. Yeah. And Trent used to shoot baskets <laughs> on the sideline with his little plastic uh, hoop set. Yeah, we did that Carroll game. and. Uh, that was the uh, second game of the losing streak. You know, like I said, at one time, like Lakeland was six and two and rocking. But we have a timeout on the floor. I think it's gonna be a full timeout, so we're gonna take a quick break. I'm not your charity case. I am not your excuse to buy a new dress for the annual fundraiser. I am not the poster child for your big donation. I am out of debt and in my own home. I am off opioids. I'm graduating on time and on my way to a great job. I am. I am. We are. We are. We are. What it means to live united. <laughs> We're back in Lakeland. Mike Martin is in Arizona. Just a reminder that we uh, have Scott and Eric in the truck today and Richard's up on top with the A team. Amela Trimberger, a junior from South High, trying to do the camera underneath, doing a great job. And Dave Gannetti joined me because Marty, like I said, is in Arizona. And uh, I know he was leaving for this game, but I mentioned a number of times where I was really excited to do this game just because of the, all the local ties. Yep. And because Concordia and Lakeland both uh, supposed to be up there for the conference and Concordia's Holding up there, and Lakeland's got to start getting things on track there. Six and nine, four and six in lead play. 
And besides from MSOE and Concordia, the rest of the pack is pretty tight. Well, it's the conference this year, I'll tell you. Um, boy, we just, Lakeland cannot yeah. get those nope. little bunnies to go. And this I'm conference is wide open this year, and I was talking to Chris Saberlick, uh, former Lakeland kid, yep. who's yep. at Marion, and yep. Marion, uh, his wife is their head women's soccer coach, and, and we both said anybody can beat anybody. Really, uh, Rockford uh, has been sneaky good on some nights, and boy, these teams can put up points because a lot of people do now this kind of a little more yep. wide open style where you're getting up and down the floor, you're putting up more threes, and you know, scores in this league are regularly teams are scoring in the hundreds. It's wow. not and unusual at all. And you don't want Aurora to get on track. You know, they're well, 500, but it. now they're right. starting to come back. Right, to and they were picked to win the league, yep. and so they're sitting out there. And But I think you, you get in that conference tournament and look out because on a given night, you know, it's one and done. Anybody could beat anybody. And I don't know who's going to come out of this league in the tournament, to be honest. Yeah, I was just That's why if you're Lakeland, just get going and get in the tournament and then see what happens. You know, a game like this, you just got to hang around. Lakeland down four right now. Got the ball back. Get a score here, get within two, and just yep. keep playing good defense. Well, and I thought that they played really good defense in the first half. And there's a three. Jaquan Pagese is another... Uh, he, he filled in a lot of time when Pat McDonald was out, and that confidence is aiding him now because you can put him on the floor. He's used to playing starters minutes, and he's got a lot of great confidence, and he's a great shooter. Yeah, and he was a spark plug that they needed in that first half, but as we were saying, and with six seconds on the shot clock, we're gonna go the other way. Or are we gonna get Nickel on the foul? Uh, For a team that's lost seven in a row, sometimes you think they come in and they may be a little flat, but I thought the defense intensity for them, for the most part, was, was really good yep. by, by the Muskies. And at some nights, you know, you get with the style of play that Lakeland has, the up and down, defense tends to go out the window sometimes, but you're right. When you play Concordia, you're gonna have to D it up. And they have, and these last couple trips down the floor, they have again. Wow. Physical out there. It's a tough game for the officials to call right now, I think, a little bit. I think they get Jahad there, and I'll tell you, he was pushed and banged and could have gone the other way very simply. But it did not. This is a good athlete here. And this time they're going to get the charge. And George is a good athlete, too. I saw them play Marion a couple weeks ago. He's a nice player, too. Yep. He comes from Milwaukee Lutheran. Well, let's see if, despite the slow start, the Muskies can bounce back and maybe take the lead here. Duffin driving, but finishes. And after being down by seven, they got the lead. That's a big one, yeah. Get those nice looks inside, and you got to make, you got to convert them. And just like that, we're going to get a timeout by Concordia. That's going to be a timeout. So at the 11:02 mark, and take another full timeout. Lakeland now ahead, 49-48. You're a busy man when you turn 18. But with all you've got going on, don't forget to register with Selective Service. It's the law. It only takes about two minutes to register at sss.gov. And you can do it without even looking up from your phone, just like that. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov. There's the Jerses. They had to split up their duty today because of uh, their other grandson is playing at Lutheran tonight with the uh, number one ranked Sheboygan Lutheran Crusaders playing Mishicot. 
And yeah, here's Adam over it. here with stats. Yeah, See, absolutely. now that the boss is here, we're getting <laughs> we're getting lots of business. I'll tell you, Adam is he, he is the best. He's a good guy. He uh I'll tell you, I watch him in football games too and what he does with his numbers and he's got normally a little crew working for him as yeah. well. Well they're on break. The kids are still on break. Yeah. They're not back till next week. They had five weeks off, can you imagine? I know I Oh man. I know some People, kids, are, I'm like, they go, I can't believe how long. I don't remember that as a kid having all that time off when I went to college. I don't know. You, you colleges and universities are making fortunes off these kids now, Dave. I know it. <laughs> I know it. And there's a miss by Duffin. Right now, Lakeland shooting 38% uh, from the floor. Concordia 42. The key to me is the turnovers. 20 turnovers on Concordia. I mean, for a team that's in second place in the league, uh, taking care of the ball uh, should be a priority, but they can't get anything to go. And now they get a Keller, Brandon Keller, the freshman from uh, Plymouth gets to the basket. Yeah, I think whichever team can tighten up here a little bit, tighten up the turnovers a little bit. Yeah, 20 turnovers. Well, they've got seven, seven already in the second half. And we're not, you know, we're barely, well, we're yeah. not even 10 minutes deep, so. That breaks a 7-0 run by the fish. Get some both to go. Missed his first two, made his next two. And a one-point lead. And what are we getting here? A 30-second timeout. Concordia's taken uh, the edge back and the rebounds 30 to 26. That's something that Lakeland's going to have to work hard and keep an eye on too. You can't can't let Concordia pound the glass, and you got to get if you're going to miss on the offensive end, you got to get another shot. And on this end, you got to limit their offensive chances. So. Well, there's work ahead for Lakeland. As Dave mentioned, they got Aurora on the 19th, Wisconsin Lutheran on the 23rd, Marion on the 26th. Then they host Concordia Chicago, uh, which at home, it's one they got to get. And then they can see uh, Aurora or Concordia, Wisconsin. So they got a lot of tough games. And uh, Five of the next seven are on the road. Jeez. And yeah, it's and there's a lot of tough places where they're, where Lakeland's playing Aurora. Wisconsin Lutheran's never an easy place to play. Mary, I mean all of them, honestly, yeah. but Marion's a great rivalry and they're having a tough year and they want to get some wins too, so. Ooh. And they get a turnover there. Limit your turnovers and get rebounds. Wins games for you. There's Tanette, we mentioned he's from California. He's got great hops for Concordia. Joey Zietlo is number 12. Down to six seconds on the shot clock. He forces up a shot. It's not going to go. And here come the fish. A little off balance going up on that one. He didn't yeah. quite have the handle. Trailing by a point, just under 10 minutes. There's McDonald. Been a good player the last few years. Pat McDonald from way downtown. But a reload on the hustle by Pat McDonald. Lakeland's standing around a little bit. Yeah, they, you know, move I, out. I move said that around. in the first half, and that, you know, they tended to do that the last couple times I've seen them. Can't get it to go. Oh, Nickel gets undercut. But he calls timeout. Very alert play. We've had a whole bunch of timeouts, so yeah. I'll tell you what, we're going to keep it right here. Our next broadcast will be the Holy War at the Shore next Friday when it's a week from Friday when uh, Sheboygan Lutheran travels to Sheboygan Christian. And uh, I'll tell you, it's the end of January, and then we have only like three or four games in February. It'll be tournament time before you know it. It's flying. I know, doesn't it's it? It's crazy. Goes fast. It does. We're it halfway really does. through the month. Yeah. And it's even looking at the uh, Lakeland schedule ahead, yeah. 
I mean, they, they have basically a, a month to go in their season, right. about 40 days. And right, yeah, I mean, it's the 15th today, and the last regular season game is the 16th of February, is senior day, and then the conference tournament starts on the 20th. So, you know, in terms of taking advantage quickly, you got to get this winning, you got to get this losing streak behind you, start putting some wins together so that you can reposition yourself in the league. You know, the good news for Lakeland, Benedictine is not eligible to play in the conference tournament this year. They were supposed to go D2. Okay. Change their minds. They're going to stay. But because of that, they're not eligible for the conference tournament. So you, you pick top six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, Lakeland right now is a game out of sixth. So that's with a they, lot of season to go. They have to, you have to be in the top six to make the tournament. Is top that? six go, one and two get a bye. Okay. To the semis, and then three plays six, four plays five. And then a winner gets an automatic bid. Winner gets the automatic berth into the NCAA Division three tournament. So you just you know at this point if you're Lakeland, start stringing some wins together, and uh, you're playing the teams above you. So reel them in and uh, yeah. put yourself in a position to get in that tournament, playing your best ball of the year, and see what happens. And you got to take care of business at home. And something that Lakeland did a real nice job in the first half was, you know, basically not allow second shots and offensive rebounds. And, you know, now they're, you know, if you think about, you know, their size, there still hasn't been a lot of, you know, these second chances for Concordia you can't allow. Right. Right. We've had a, a lot of up and down trips too with no points for each team. Either. Right. I was talking to our football coach and we were both remarking at the pace in the first half and he said, I'm not sure it's really benefiting either team because <laughs> there's not a lot of scoring going on. And I said, yeah, I think you're right. Oh, Nygaard's open. He's got to finish. found him. Yep. That's what Nygaard's good at. You get him around the basket down there and he usually finds a way. Fifth year senior grad student. He already graduated actually. He's working on his MBA. Wow. And playing basketball. That's and playing basketball. Forget about that part of the uh, school. Yeah. These kids are all full time students. Dean's list came out today actually. There's a lot of a lot of these guys that are on that list, which is That's great. That's yeah, it is. You can make all conference and be on the Dean's list. Those are two pretty good lists to be on. Yep. And not going strong to the basket was George and Nygar with the rebound. And here comes Hazi going right to the basket where she's good at. Does not get a foul call. Lakeland a chance to take the lead here. Run a good set and get a good look. Back in come the Jersey boys. And I'm sure you're going to pretty much get your starters back into the game for the last seven minutes pretty soon. And again, a little trouble having the inbound. Yeah, there's that five second call in the first half. Yeah. I thought, boy, are we going to get another one? Nickel got caught there. Nygaard with a nice kick out. Campos can't find, he found everything in the first half. Yeah. But there's a reload. Just a little short. McDonald, bingo. Tell you, sometimes McDonald takes those acrobatic and you think, oh, that's not going to go in. And, and they go. He makes all of those. It's crazy. And a nice replay there of his rainbow shot and a four point lead. Now you got to get stops. You're Lakeland. You got to put you got to put some stops. Wow, together. that's a nice spin move. Late call, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. The I guy was, down on the baseline didn't want to make it. So. No, he didn't. And it was right in front of him. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think Eric was so sure yeah, about that. Yeah, I wasn't quite either. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was, if you're Lakeland now, you just you got to string stops together. Well, Lakeland and George at the free throw line. Not very good at the free throw line. About a 55% free throw shooter. And uh, Concordia's missed their last three free throws, which is also helping the fish. Yeah. 
One on a two trip. I'm going to have to get out and see this Sheboygan Lutheran team play. Oh, with they the, are unbelievable. Yeah, that's what I hear. I mean, I, I'm, well, Dave, I'm like you. I'm really tough. I've always been tough and things like that, but they are the deal. Yeah. They are the deal. I, uh, and I'm a tough cookie to sell. You are. And uh, Nygaard, can he hit one? He Ooh. does. You know, he's sneaky out there behind that three-point line. You think, oh boy, why are, you know, why are you taking the three? He'll make them. I don't know what his percentage is on the year, but he can hit the three. Well, it's his 11th of the year, and none but a bigger one, a six-point lead. Uh, Lakeland was down 48 to 42, and uh, they're on a 15 to three run. Johnson is pretty good at the free throw line, gonna try to help the Falcons back in. Yeah, I mean, Nygaard's a 33% three-point shooter, not great, but when you consider oh. that he's a, as close to a big man as Lakeland's gonna get. Yep. He's not chucking that many up there either, so. <laughs> well, we'll see if foul trouble hurts Lakeland here as they are well over the bonus with eight fouls, team fouls on Lakeland. Johnson's gonna get both those to go. Offensive and end, just be smart, run your sets, score some points. You don't need to do anything fancy. Yeah, you've gotta come and see Lutheran play. They. Uh, yeah, I definitely want they, to. Uh, one thing I always kind of question a little bit is can you play defense? And they play defense. And that Agnostic kid is for real. He is for real. Hazi from way downtown. How on the rebound. And they're going to get a foul. And that's kind of stuff you don't want to do yeah, there. Yeah, it's tough. When you're already in the bonus, yeah. that's a tough one. Derek Duffin needs to know that that's not the place yep. to foul. Miss the shot and get a tough call. And I know uh, Howe is their big player, but uh, Johnson's their best free throw shooter, but you don't want to put Josh Howe at the line. Thousand point score at Concordia. And now they had nothing going for him, and fouls are hurting you. All of a sudden it's a three point and maybe a two point game here. Three-point game, must have jinxed him. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, it's not sorry. <laughs> yeah. Campos, Hazi, Duffin. Let's get a good shot here. Good screen by McDonald. Duffin going to the basket, can't get it to go. Rebound by Jers. Got a nice drive, got a nice look, just couldn't put it down. Good vision by Jers up the floor. He's trying to look inside. I think number 22, Andrew Fratsky, he's one of the best field goal percentage shooters in uh, Division Three. He's number 22, just getting in there. Can't get it to go. Nice offensive rebound on that first miss, but Lakeland cut him off after that. You got to limit those offensive rebounds down the stretch if you're Lakeland on the Concordia end. We're at 444 left in the first, excuse me, second half. Campos, five seconds, four seconds, misses it. Hustles for it, it's McDonald, of course, down there. At the timeout, I think, yep, heads up play. It's a 30 second timeout. These, came, these teams can't have many timeouts left. No. Holy smokes. No. Yeah, smart play by Jers. There was a lot of bodies on the floor there. And when he grabbed it free and clear, maximize, call the timeout and maximize the possession. Now you have other sports in the spring as well. You have baseball. Base, but spring is uh, baseball, softball. Soccer. Both the soccers are, yep. are fall. Okay. We don't do, and then um, I'm gonna forget, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Baseball, golf, softball. Golf for tennis. Yeah. Casey. Right. Casey Carr. Right. Um, what else is there? I'm forgetting. I'm going to see a list. Yeah, Adam would know off the top of his head. See, that's why I got Adam. 
Women's basketball has a big one tomorrow night. They're down at uh, Wisconsin Lutheran. And uh, Lakeland's women's basketball team has won 10 in a row. And they're tied for first. And uh, that's going to be a good one. I know you have a uh, play out here too, which I went to a play out here last year. They do a nice job doing that. Yep. You have a lot of stuff to offer students and, you know, ath athletes. And, you know, we always talk about athletes, but there's plenty of things sure. to do out here. Theater, music, uh, good student activities, the new campus center, the kids are loving that. So, so it's good. Nygaard, oh, gets it. Wow, nice play. Kratzky with the strip. Nice defensive play. Jerse with a nice feed to Johnson. It's now 57-56. Nice turnaround for Concordia. Great defensive play and then came down and put the bucket in. Watch Jerse with the nice pass. Yeah, great, great pass. Doesn't score a lot. There's a bunch of assists for the freshman. And there's a nice look for the Muskies. Great look. And a foul yeah. on Howe. Sheboygan to Plymouth. <laughs> And I'll tell you, Eric Nygaard, I think, was shut out in the first half. Has nine here in the second half. Can add to that. Well, again, he's hanging around down around the basket. He's uh, looking for those opportunities, and guys are finding him, too, which is a big part of it. Ooh, missed the foul shot. 3.13 left. This one looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Oh, a nice kiss off the glass. Yeah, I got the defender in the air there and just waited him out. I'll tell you, Jordan Johnson came in averaging 12. He's having a nice, nice ball game. You know, if you're Lakeland now, you just want to keep the lead. Yep. You know, I think that'd be, if Concordia can find a way to get the lead, it would be a nice mental lift. And if you're Lakeland, run your stuff, take some time off the clock, but then get a, st get a score. Now in the six seconds, Hazi trying to create his own. Nice jump shot, nothing there. Got time. Ooh, bailed out there a little bit, I think. Not by the officials, but it was a nice play. Hazenstein, I think, tapped the ball. Just a warning. Tried to do a dump off pass, and I don't know if Nygaard was quite expecting it, but Zach got it back and was able to put it in right before the buzzer, so. Boy, Concordia worked their whole shot clock right, right. down, and then at right at the end, uh, put it in. Concordia doesn't need a three. They should probably be going for their best two. The Church shoots three and makes it. <laughs> Didn't need it, but they'll take it, right? And, uh, Tie ball game. Yeah. Didn't have a lot of opening there, but a uh, big, big shot there by Jacob Jers. Nygaard, kind of a force, and it's going to be a one and out. And Coach Cassidy slowing up the troops. 61 61, minute 43 left. And uh, Jake Jers. Now, if you're Lakeland, you got to lock in now. Yeah, McDonald's a good defender. Oh, but Johnson got behind the yeah. musky defense there. Yeah, yeah. Back door. Slid in for the layup. Can't turn your head for a minute. No. Nope. And that's what happened that time. Johnson took advantage of it. Duffin from way deep. Bingo! Ooh. What a big shot. That's your senior. Hadn't made his last couple, and uh, these kids are not afraid to shoot, that's no, for sure. No, I was not happy with the shot until it swished through the net. 101, Jersh driving back to his brother. 14 on the shot clock. Hobby's going to get called for a foul, and that'll send the senior, Jake Jers, to the line. 64% from the free throw stripe, but unfortunately for Lakeland, he'll have two chances. First one, even the score. Well, it's Lakeland and Concordia. It's going to go down to the wire. Big <laughs> surprise. 
Oh, I said in 127th meeting and that's amazing. That is. That's what I said. Well, that just tells you how old these schools are. I too. know. Well, Jersey. Now you're doing two meetings a year, but you yeah. know the the dates back to the 38, 39 I school know. year, which was probably when they both started up official intercollegiate sports. So, Ozentine for three, not going to get it, and cleared away by Noah Gussie, and we're at 40 seconds left. Just a one-point lead. So Lakeland, you need a stop. Yeah. When do you when do you look to foul here, Coach? I'm uh, let I'm playing D. All you got to do is get a stop. Yep. It's about a it's about a 13 second difference between the shot clock and the game yeah. clock. So. Yeah. We're at 27 eight. We'll leave it here. You can't let them get a three though. No. No. That you you can't do. I if I'm uh, Concordia, I'm going to Howe or Johnson. And uh, see if they can get something off the dribble or something. But you're right, don't allow the three. And if you're Lakeland, don't fall. Play tough, but don't bail them out at the end. Uh, bad scenario for uh, Lakeland is that uh, if they get the ball back, either down by one or down by three, just four team fouls on Concordia, right. they can take fouls. Exactly. And there's exactly. no bonus. Um, it's the old coach in me. Yeah, no, I used to no, bump, you're I used right. to tell you're my right. guys two or three seconds we foul, make sure they catch it coming back this yep. way, tw away from the basket, couple dribbles and foul, and uh, fans don't like it, but no, that's uh, you got to play the averages, right? Yeah, but uh, well, and you just make sure you don't foul somebody trying to take a three. <laughs> right, right. That's uh, that you, you make it difficult. We'll see if uh, Concordia. Well, we'll see what the scenario is, especially with a three-point lead. You're obviously going to want to do that a lot. Let's see who Lakeland sends out to the floor. Obviously, you're going to have Pat McDonald. Pagisi, who's had a great game. Garrett Duffin, number 22. Eric Nygaard, Zach Hosenstein. Got your shooters. Yep. Uh, what you need here is a stop and uh, 14 seconds on the shot clock. That's the important thing. And if they do shoot, you got to get the rebound. So it's back to Juris, the senior. Yep. Dump down to Johnson. Kick out. That's Johnson. He misses. Fighting for the rebound. Nygaard has it with 16 seconds and Lakeland with a chance to win it here. Good pressure by Jared Juris. They're trying to foul. Nobody's fouling. Pagis. Triple drive, and he's fouled. That was an intelligent play by Howell. Yep. yep. And if I was Concordia, I'd be calling timeout here. I say you could see the, the the coaches on the sidelines were imploring somebody to foul, but you got to be careful on that situation. That if I'm Concordia, I'm telling my guys to foul again. Yeah. You got two fouls to give here. Yeah. Sam's and taking a timeout to draw something up, so and, uh, I'm sure he's going to point that out to them. But yeah, hey, they've only got five fouls, so they're going to be looking to foul you. So. If you got somebody coming at you hard. Oh, yeah. Maybe get a shot up, you might get a call. Yeah, if I was Lakeland there, I don't know if I would have called timeout just because of that scenario. Yeah. I'm going to drop a play here. You know, with the size of Concordia, I think you're better off with a more of a perimeter shot. Getting somebody off of a screen or something? Yeah, I'd say, you know, Nygaard has had great success under the basket. And if you can get him alone down there, and if, you know, a couple times he's gotten the Concordia defense, I think, has lost him a little bit. So let your guys on the perimeter know, hey, let's try to work something inside the Nygaard and maybe get him slipped behind somebody and a layup could win the thing. You well, don't need a three. Nope. Nope. And Jordan Johnson and his big wingspan yep. is going to be in front of Hosenstein yep. here. Nobody protecting the basket. McDonald's going to have to touch it at some point, I would think. Plenty of time. And yep. there's that foul. Good foul. And I'll tell you, George did what he was supposed to do going to go to the opposite end. So 4.1 seconds to play here. Lakeland now going to call timeout yep. again. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I think, Dave, because of the scenario, you got to get somebody coming off a double screen or something to someplace so they can catch and shoot because right. you know they're going to be falling. Right. And uh, so I would be either doing some double screen to the, maybe to the closest, you know, corner over to the, to our right here. Right. And, um, set something up that way. You don't want to go away from the basket because no. that's definitely yeah. going to hurt you. you. Wanna, right, exactly. Move toward the basket. Try your, to slip your, somebody open. Your thoughts, same thing? Or? Yeah, exactly. I don't need a three. Don't, you know, try to get something good moving toward the basket. A good looking shot. Maybe they can set Again, I, I think you're going to see probably the ball in McDonald's hands again. Obviously, he got it out here and was, and was driving toward the basket. I wouldn't be surprised if you see something similar again. I also thought that Concordia manned up. They had nobody under the basket. Right. Which is not a good way I would play D either. Right. So you could maybe slip someone towards the basket to get an easy lob of some sort. Right. And that's how they're going to man it again. You know, you could, you know, hook around Nygaard or something now. Yeah. And see if he can spin off towards the basket. We'll get a lob. There's our screen, our double screen. There's McDonald where I thought. He got it back to Hazi. Hazi for three. Oh. Ah. Nice play set up. Very nice play. That's what I would have ran something very similar. Yep. And uh, well, again, you had McDonald slipped off that double screen. Uh, the window was a little too tight to get him the ball. And man, I, tough loss for Lakeland. And I think Concordia heard us saying that's where the ball is going to go. Right. Right. Well, a uh, bummer of a loss for uh, Lakeland is they're going to fall to five and seven and six and ten. Uh, Concordia ups it to ten and two. Still in the hunt for the conference championship. Dave, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate you it. You're, it's you're, a pleasure. Uh, you're uh, like I said, very knowledgeable, and I, I love coming out to Lakeland as well. I just want to say good night for the crew. Um, Camilla Trimberger was our student helper from South, and of course we had the A team tonight: Richard on the camera and Eric and Scott in the truck. My name is Chris Wright, and uh, for Mike Martin, who's in Arizona, who always says, "We'll see you down the road. We'll see you next week at the Holy War at the Shore."